Does your company have a healthy CAC to CLV ratio? And what does that ratio have to do with quantum mechanics? Find out in this short clip. So what is the CAC to CLV ratio? Well, in our example before, we calculated CAC from a company that had $125,000 in sales and marketing expense. And that included all kinds of stuff like commission, sales support, free trial. And 50 new customers came in, giving them a CAC of about 2,500. Well, the proper ratio between a CAC and CLV, meaning how much you get out of a customer over their lifetime, is about 3x. That's what investors and a healthy company generally should be operating at. So in this example, if, you, if it takes you $2,500 to acquire a customer, which is quite high, then it, you should be getting $7,500 back from them over their customer lifetime value. And remember, we talked about CLV and how to calculate that in the first part of our series. So these numbers become much more interesting when you trend them. If you watch CAC over time, is it rising or falling in relation to CLV? If CAC is going up, and CLV is going down, well, then you've got a major red flag because that means that you're paying more to get customers who don't stick around. On the other hand, if CAC is falling and CLV is rising, well, that's a very positive sign that you've got a sticky business and customers continue to stay with you. Now, I run a blog called Schrodinger's Cat, and this is a perfect example of Schrodinger's Cat where if you're not looking at the right metrics, you don't know if your business is going to be alive or dead. Look at CAC to CLV ratio and use that to help calculate, to help get ahead of how your business is performing.